So in this section, I want to cover linear shift invariance for spatial systems or linear time invariance for temporal systems. So these are often abbreviated as LSI or LTI because these are very important, uh, it's a very important class of systems that we will come across and um, really is the focus of this module to deal with LSI or LTI systems. So what do we mean by that exactly? Well, as we know, for a linear system, um, here I'm showing some continuous uh, function of a spatial position x, uh, some input function 1, which we run through some linear system, which gives us an output function, function of x, calling that f out 1. And if I have some second different input function, f in 2, and run that through the linear system, I'll get this output uh, marked by 2, f out 2. Then we know by linearity that I can scale up or down um, that input, scale up or down um, the second input as well as the first input, and that that will, when you pass them through the linear system, correspond to an output that is just the correspondingly scaled up or down outputs summed together um, in a way shown here. In other words, we just take the output that we get from the first input and the output that we get from the second input add them together and that gives us the output obtained when we put both functions, both signals in um, at the same time by adding them together. So that's just a, a rapid review of, of what a linear, linear system would do. Um, but what do we mean by a linear shift invariant system? So in this case, um, we still have linearity of course, but we have an extra property we have this uh, shift invariance. And what we mean by that is that that input function f input 1 of x, if I slide that left or right by some amount x1, so minus x1 slides it to the right, plus if that's overall positive, if it was x1 is negative, it go to the left. Um, if I move that around, then the output also moves around correspondingly in the same way by the same displacement. And so likewise, if for the second input, I move that left or right by this amount x2, then in the output, it also moves left or right by that same amount x2. So it is kind of intuitively what we might expect. But as we'll see, it's not always the case. Um, and so in general, for a linear shift invariant system, that means a weighted amount of a particular input function when you slide it left or right, when you shift it around in space, um, we can predict what the output would be because the output would be the same but just also shifted according to the shift of the input function and of course with the weight preserved as well. And you can do that by adding together many such shifted functions and then the overall output will be the sum of all the shifted outputs that we would have obtained from the individual um, input functions. So really this shift invariance is like an extra property on top of that of linearity. And of course this would also apply for a linear time invariant system where what we're saying is that if you had a response at one moment, moment in time um, um, due to some input and then if you put that same input in at a later time then you get the same output but at that corresponding later time as well. So very much what we would expect. Um, this slide is just a quick reminder on what those shifts do. Uh, hopefully you're, you are already familiar with this from an earlier lecture, uh, but just to spell out that if we've got some function x of n, then if we plot the function x of n minus n0, then that corresponds to a shift, uh, shift to the right of that function. And so feel free to pause this slide if you want to reread through the details of that. Okay, so now looking at a 1D um, shift invariant, linear shift invariant example. Um, so here you can imagine a very crude, simplified, uh, discrete linear imaging system where we've got some uh, point source here located at position 7 um, of amplitude 1 like a delta function, we run it through this uh, simple LSI system and we'll get some output here. And so you can see here it's given us some, if you like, some kind of blurred response to that point 
input into this crude imaging system. Now, that's fine for linearity, but in terms of showing that this is linear shift invariant, had that point source, that, that uh, delta function, been at uh, a position five, uh, five um, units to the left, and so located at index two here, so it's got a value of one there and zero elsewhere, so that's f of uh, x plus five. If we run that through this linear shift invariant system, then what we get is exactly the same um, shape of response. So notice the shape of the response. It's a 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.5. So likewise here it's 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.5, but it's just correspondingly shifted to the location of the input. Um, and then I've just shown trivially that this is non nonetheless still a linear system such that if I add input one to input two, to give this input one plus input two, if I run that through my LSI system, then sure enough, the output is just the sum of those individual outputs. And that's just shown here um, for the case of that shifted point source for the uh, second input. Um, so moving on to a, a 2D uh, discrete um, space example here. Now I've got a point source going through some um, imaging device. So you could imagine this as some very crude, low resolution camera taking a, a photo of the night sky. And this is just a single star in the middle of the field of view. Then when we take that photo using our 2D linear shift invariant imaging device, then we'll get some kind of response, some kind of imperfect photograph, if you like, of that uh, point source of light. So that's the input function here is the star, and the output function is the photo that we get. Now, with an LSI, linear shift invariant system, had that point source of light been shifted to the left and shifted upwards, by 64 pixels to the left and 64 pixels upward. Obviously, this is now assuming the input is discrete. So um, I know I've talked about a star in the night sky, but if we imagine that as a discrete uh, object that we're taking a photograph of, um, then if that input were to be shifted there, run it through our 2D uh, imaging system, then look, we get exactly the same response function, that same blurred uh, response, uh, but just shifted to the location of that point source um, in the input function. So you can see the output is the same shape and size as the input, uh, as the output obtained in the first case, but just repositioned according to the location of the input. And of course, again, given this is a linear system, if we add together input one to input two, in other words, we just scan across all the pixels in input one, scan across all the uh, pixels in input two, and just add together the pixel values, then of course we just get the sum of these two point sources here, run those through our LSI system, then the output is simply the sum of output one and output two. So that is an example, a very explicit imaging example of a linear shift invariant system. Um, and just to say that homogeneity, that kind of scaling property, still applies for LSI systems. You know, it's still a linear system. So in other words, if I had uh, only 0.2 times the brightness or, or amplitude of that point source of light, that star in the night sky, whatever it is we're calling this input example, if I scale it by 0.2, then the output is correspondingly scaled by 0.2. I haven't put any scaling on the second input here, so the output looks the same but it's a linear system. So when I put both of those in together, so that's the 0.2 of the, of the original input and then just uh, the standard second input, then the output is just the sum of those two um, individual outputs. Um, now, in contrast, to really drive home the point of a linear shift invariant system, let's take a look at a linear shift variant system. So here we've got the same case as before, a sort of point source in the middle of the field of view of my 2D imaging system, and so I get some kind of response uh, in photographing that input function. Um, now, if I have the point source of light displaced off towards the corner of the field of view of my low quality imaging device here, then you see in the output, it's as if we've got a far more blurred response. The, the closer 
to the edge of the field of view that we get, uh, the worse the spatial resolution of my system. I mean, th this can happen, but obviously I'm exaggerating it here um, just to make a point clear. And so you can see that that point now has gone to um, a different uh, shape size response function compared to when the point was in the middle. Now, the point is that whilst this is now a different response according to location, so it's shift variant, it's still linear. And so therefore, if we put input one and input two in together to have those two points, then the output is still the sum of those individual outputs. And so we get the kind of good quality in the middle and the bad quality towards the edge, but just simply added together. So still a linear system, but now explicitly a shift variant uh, linear system. So what I've said applies, I hope you can see, naturally also to linear time invariant systems. Uh, and again, to make the point there, it's a bit like saying an input at one moment in time gives some output a moment, at a moment in time. And if you delay that input, then you get the same output correspondingly delayed. And so it's very much what you would expect from a system, uh, from a temporal uh, processing you know, DSP system, whatever it might be. Um, so there you are, a really key um, uh, principle there of linear shift invariance and linear time invariance, and they contrast with space variance and time variance. Thank you.